You're listening to the third annual Very Merry Holiday Edition of the No Nonsense Roundtable, a weekly show broadcast on Rochester, New York's 50,000 watt iHeartRadio station, News Radio Wham 1180. And now, your host, Dom Genova. This is Dom Genova, host of the No Nonsense Roundtable. Last week and the week before, we had live performances at Fanatics Pub in Lima. Jim Shelley, the owner, let us keep every dollar of the ticket fee to donate to the Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp and Ronald McDonald House Charities of Rochester. It was a blast. We had fun, laughs, and music galore. Each show, though, was two hours. So what we did is we put performances from that show into this show that you're about to hear, and more will be heard later if you log into our YouTube on no-nonsense-roundtable.com. At this point, I'd like to tell you, you're going to hear a lot of great performances and a presentation that includes the Middle Finger Lake Players, my, my arts group, if you will. Now, one thing I have to do is shout out to Canandaigua National Bank and Trust that sponsored the show and helped us get this on the air. So enjoy. I'm, I'm doing this because, well, I don't know, it seems like fun to me. Uh, and, and anybody that doesn't know about me, I had a, a car dealership in Avon for a number of years. As a matter of fact, you can see a picture of us there back in 1994. We started a dealership with, you see, that's my, that's when I had hair, okay? On the left-hand side there, that little pudgy guy. I'm still pudgy, but I don't have any hair. Oh, this is Shwanda, by the way. Shwanda is, well, we're recording this. Uh, this show, and it's going to be on my radio show. I have a radio show on Saturdays now on WHAM, and we have 10,000 listeners, which is a lot more people than we have here, right? Wow. You, do you love me, or are you just reading her signs? Yeah, I, I'll take it any way I can get it. I don't care. Um, so um, is, is, there, is there house music up now? I, I hear something. It's not oh, it's just the voices in my head, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. This, this is not going well already. Um, so um, so uh, I, I sold the dealerships back in, in 19, uh, 19, well, not 1990. It was in 2020. And uh, decided that I needed something else to do. So I have this radio show. We talk to 10,000 people every Saturday. And it's called uh, Your No-Nonsense Roundtable. And we have people that you know that you need to know about and people that maybe you don't know that you should know. And I have really great guests and really great stories. And some of those people are here tonight. The first one I want to introduce you to is my sidekick here, Carl Laporta. Now, Carl... This is going to go so well on the radio. Thank you so much. But, but Carl, Carl, a musician, piano tuner, really great guy. He's become uh, one of my brothers, as has uh, Chuck Ricardo there. You can't see him, but we're going to have him up later. Uh, but Carl uh, decided to write a letter to the, uh, Ro- uh, the Rochester uh, Democrat and Chronicle back in, I think it was 2011? Nine. 2009. 2009. Okay, 2009. And said, we should have a Rochester Music Hall of Fame. And they, you know, basically they say, I like to tell the story, I'd like to embellish a little bit. They said, okay, wise guy, go do that, <laughs> okay? And he did, okay? So we have a Rochester Music Hall of Fame that's wonderful. We have one of the board members in the back too, John Dredo. I can't see you, John. But what a, what a wonderful organization. And if you ever go to one of the presentations that they have, one of the inductions they have, it is just as nice as any uh, Emmys or, or, uh, or, or Oscars or whatever. So this is what I do. I, I go and I try to find really nice, uh, nice people or nice places to, uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, in, impress people and, and tell people about. And certainly, like Jim's place here is really great. How many, how many of you have never been here before? Okay, a lot of people you haven't been here before. You need to see what he does. It's really kind of cool. So he gets acts in during the week that normally would be traveling between here and there, and they come here because it's better to make some money here than make no money someplace else. And he has he has these he has these great acts. You would never say this. Now the problem is, it's in Lima, and everybody in Rochester knows. I can't go to Lima. It's too far. You know, and, 
You know, I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean like what? You, you, you don't have to spend the night someplace. You can get here and get back in, in 10 minutes or whatever it is. And um, so um, w one of the things here is that, I mean, it's a, it's a Christmas show, right? You know, we say, you know, it's holidays. Well, no, it's Christmas. It's a Christmas show. So we want something, I, I wanted to have something very traditionally Christmas for you at, at the beginning of the show. So uh, right now we have uh, uh, Jim Van Brederode who's going to come in in very traditional uh, Christmas way and, and serenade you with, uh, well, J Jim, come on in. What's more, what's more traditional than a guy in a skirt playing a bagpipe? There you go. Hey, buddy. Now, you, now for those of you, do, I, I can't imagine this. My show is, you know, people you know you need to know more about and whatever. I can't imagine anybody doesn't know Jim. But Jim, Jim was the uh, police chief of, of Gates. And anytime they had any, yes, and anytime they had anything to do with, uh, uh, with the uh, with with crime in you know in in Monroe County that we call either Jim or Todd Baxter's out there someplace. So, yeah, yeah Sheriff Todd, <laughs> Sheriff Sheriff Todd, and remember the the speed trap is in Avon, but <laughs> but that's not their jurisdiction. So you got no hope, okay? That's that's Doherty. Doherty's doing that stuff, you know. So yeah, right. Yeah, it's right outside Jerry's coin farm. So, uh, but but then again, uh, but so uh, Jim has got this uh, bagpipe group, and it's really a great story. I mean, like three of you guys got together and decided that you were going to play bagpipes one day. Yeah, um, <laughs> three guys and a six pack of beer, and here we are, 25 <laughs> years later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, look, at, I, I'm really not Jim tonight. I I, I am the original Claus, and I, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, and you know. Uh, I went shopping today for for, for Dom here because you know he, he's well, a great guy, a wig, right? and I, 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 yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys heard about this new senior citizen GPS unit. <laughs> Have you guys heard about this one yet? It, it, it takes you all the back roads, right? Avoids the the big intersections, and hopefully you don't get tangled up with another car. But more importantly, when you get to your destination, it, uh, it reminds you why you're even there. So. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, they were sold out of those today. So uh, anyway, I've had a, a very no-nonsense Monday. I hope everyone's having a great night tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I interviewed Jim a couple of weeks ago. As a matter of fact, you can get all the old shows on no-nonsense-roundtable.com anytime you want, okay? So I'm interviewing him, and he says, well, you know, we, were, we went to... Uh, uh, some funeral, whatever, in in, uh, in New York, and you know we heard these bagpipers, and we want to start a bagpipe thing, and we started to do it. I go, well, how do you do that? He says, well, you get up, you practice, and whatever. I go, could you imagine? Could you actually imagine having a child that wants to practice the bagpipes? I mean, you you you, you complain about a flute or a, or a horn or something, bagpipes. And plus, I learned something: you can't vary the volume on it, right? So it sounds like you're, stra you're strangling goose when you're doing this, doesn't it? I mean, it's, it's got to be horrible. But they, I, I, actually, it kind of it kind of looks it kind of looks like it kind of looks kind of kind of looks like a goose. Okay, we're going to take a break now. We have a commercial. Uh, we 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 have a we have a commercial from well, we have commercials just from Middle Finger Lake. So uh, there's our first commercial of the, of the night. Oh yes, this is all brought to you by the Middle Finger Lakes Chamber of Commerce. Now a message from Earl's pretty good Hyundai. Earl's Pretty Good Hyundai of Middle Finger Lake embarks on the journey of average at Earl's Pretty Good Hyundai. Experience decent performance, standard technology, and a commitment to not-so-bad customer satisfaction. Drive with a moderate level of confidence. Drive an Earl's Pretty Good Hyundai. 10% extra rebate if your Hyundai was stolen. 20% extra if you had two stolen. Three, and you must be going somewhere seriously wrong, and we don't want your business anyway. Free iPhone with every purchase. This segment brought to you by Canandaigua National Bank and the Middle Finger Lakes Chamber of Commerce. 
Looking for an injury attorney? Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe are your personal injury specialists. We not only will try our best to get you millions in your court case, but if we lose, we'll give you 500 scratch-off lottery tickets, meaning all is not lost. Remember our motto, if you lose, you still might win. Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Approval to the New York Bar, still pending. At this time, I'd like to give a shout out to Joanne Ryan, who is the president and CEO of the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Rochester. The Ronald McDonald House Charities of Rochester serve 800 families with children in the hospital every year, providing 10,000 nights of food, lodging, and transportation, and saving families $2.5 million a year in expenses. All of this right here in Rochester. God bless them. One of the things I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful for, for with having this show is I get to meet people that I normally would not have met. And, and Chuck has become like a, a brother to me, as, as has Carl, as uh, has John Dredo. And uh, Chuck, uh, you need to know Chuck. Chuck is in the Rochester Music Hall of Fame. Uh, his, his son, uh, Joe, is tremendously talented in his own right. And the joy of my life is I get to meet these people because I invite them on the show and I get to, I get, I get to bond with them. And, uh, and I think that a lot of people don't know uh, about Chuck. I mean, Chuck uh, recorded in Motown uh, with Barry Gordy. Wow. Right? He's got, he's got great Diana Ross stories. <laughs> yeah, and, and how they used to produce, you know, radio back in, you know, or songs back in the day, you know, like what an echo chamber was back then was an echo chamber, right? I mean, and he has, and he has tremendous, tremendous story, and he's rock and roll, uh, he, well, he's Rochester Music Royalty. He uh, is in the uh, Rochester Music Hall of Fame. And uh, we expect his son to be someday soon. So, uh, but uh, what do you guys? Uh, well, uh, what else do we do? We have. Uh, oh, maybe we should. Maybe, no, let's play Joe's. Let, let's play Joe's Christmas song first. Do you want to introduce the? You want to introduce this song, and then you can play with your dad a little bit. I'd rather play with my dad first. You want to play? With, okay, that's fine. All right, play with your dad first, and then we'll we'll play the Christmas song. He produced the Christmas song, and it's going to be. Can I tell him it's going to be sung by uh, Barry Manilow? Can I, can I tell him that? Uh, yes, of course. Well, I just did tell him that. So, I mean, <laughs> at that point, you have no choice. This is, like, this is like when you fall and you say, watch it. It fell already. There you go. I'm going to sing a song, and then I'm going to bring my father up to sing a Christmas song. All right. We need a little musical break, don't you agree? Yeah. Uh, I want to thank Dom. I just met Dom through my father, maybe... I don't know, a year ago, a couple of years ago. And I want to thank you, Dom, for your passion for the community, no, your passion no. for your radio show, and doing this. You didn't need to do it, and I, I'm happy to be here like everybody else is happy to be here. And so I had this idea, my father's going to join me for a little song, because he said, just come, we'll play your video to the song called Christmas in New York. I'll give you an idea of it. A couple of years ago, I went to New York, and I, oh, this is a funny story. I went to New York and I was hustling around, you know, trying to get work and doing this. And I ran into this woman called, you got to hear this story, it's worth a minute. It goes, and her name was, uh, I sang at Colgate University, this is about two, three years ago. And she goes, I want to give you my card. And I go, okay. So she gives me her card. And her name was Vasi Lawrence, okay? And she goes, you know, I do Broadway stuff and you better call me, young man. You know, she said, I'm a legend. So about like a, I had the card, and I finally, like a month later, I said, I'm going to call. I, I lost the card, and I said, I've got to call Vasi Lawrence. This all leads to the Christmas song that he loves. Listen to this. I, I didn't even think about this, but it's a funny story. I don't, I've never even told this out loud, but it's, uh, I told my father. So her name was Vasi Lawrence, right? So a month goes by. I said, I've got to call Vasi Lawrence, but I lost her card, and I didn't even remember her name. So naively, I call one, what is it, 212 you know, the New York 555-1212 or whatever it is, you know, the information. And I'm looking for a, a, a Vasi Lawrence. You know, you know how many Lawrences there must be in New York City, right? Yeah. And, the, the, and I'm thinking that I'm going to get a hold of her because I figure Vasi's kind of original. And the, 
So he goes, oh yeah, I got the Vasi Lawrence. And she, she gives me this number and she pieces me through this number. And this guy answers the phone. I go, is Vasi there? And he goes, no. It was this guy named Jamie Lawrence. And we started talking, this is true. The only one call, because it leads to this, it's hysterical. It's fate, I think. He goes, uh, what do you like to do? He was like talkative. And I go, well, um, I like to write songs and sing and stuff. He goes, do you know who I am? I'm Jamie Lawrence. I'm the music producer of the Tony Awards, he goes. I go, you're not Vasi Lawrence? He goes, no, I'm Jamie Lawrence, right? I go, can we do something? Can I be on the show? I mean, is there anything we can do? And what happened was he ends up coming. I sent him some music that I wrote. He ends up coming to Rochester wow. and staying in my house for a couple of days. And I figured, what can I do to create with this guy? You know, because he, he's a very, he's a, he's a wonderful musical director and he, he's, he does kind of big productions. I said, let me do some holiday songs. And that's what started with that. It's a great song. Christmas so you'll hear that in a minute. But anyways, before I bring my father up, I was thinking up there, uh, Dom said, sing a song before you, because the thing I'm going to do with my father will just be a second. Can I sing one song for you? And I got a love song I want to sing. And it's called, I Love Being With You. And right now, being a singer, songwriter, whatever you want to say, you know, man, whatever, this song I put together maybe 10 years, you never know the life of a song, right? If it's good, it's good. It finds it's got its own life. So recently, without even my thing, like they're, they're scoping it around Nashville. I always felt there was something about this song. So that was the one that popped in my mind. I'll do a little bit of this, and then I want to bring up my father, who is my favorite singing partner. Now, if Gladys Knight was here, I'd have to put him to the side. Other than Gladys Knight, my father is my main guy. I've been blessed with him. We've done over 150 shows together in our lives, and I'm proud of that. Thank you, Father. So I'll give you a little bit of this. Check this out. It's only been a day. You seem so far away. I'm not afraid to say I miss you. Even when I'm free, I want you there with me. I want everyone to see us together would you wander the world beside me like the moon and the sun that guide me I love how you realize me Ooh, I love being with you people come and go I want you to know I won't ever let you go I need you I'm better when you're near Everything is clear It's so beautiful to hear That you love me Would you wander the world Beside me Like the moon and the sun that guide me I love how you realize me Ooh, I love being with you I love being with you I love being with you it's for you, Dami Chuck Ricardo, come on up here. Father Chuck! Give it up for Father Chuck! I love you, Father Chuck. Hello, brother. Hey, brother. Here's one thing that happens, and it's almost, Brian, this is kind of, I accept it, but it's almost, it's not humiliating, but it's just, it, I've had him come up and do my show, and everybody goes, oh, that's cute, your father's going to come up and do your show. He freaking steals my show every time. You know, I have, to, I have to live with that. Every time, I call him the guy in the blue glasses. And I've been trying to get him out of his shell all these years. <laughs> so Dom said, Joey, just come and introduce No. When you come to my house... It's in our family blood. 
I don't care if you weigh 50 pounds. You're, getting, you're not getting one meatball. You're getting two. And you're getting fat ones. And if you don't eat them, I'll eat them. But I'm going to give them to you. So we'll do a little bit of this song. It's on anybody that Touch. wants to hear the, the, the video he's going to play for. Oh, and that was that thing. The only reason I said about Jamie Lawrence is because when you hear the Christmas in New York thing, we produced that together from that stupid call for Vasi Lawrence. It's I still can't. We're best of friends now. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Is that funny or what? So one of the albums, the other thing is uh, Dom says, I said, let's do a little something for Dom. So this one's, this one's on the same album. You go to YouTube, watch them for free. There's five songs. We wrote them and produced them with Jamie Lawrence. And hopefully some good things will come. Father, are you ready to sing with me or not? I'm ready to sing with you. Me, me, me. Me, 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 me. This is called Christmas with You. We wrote it, by the way, together, which was a beautiful thing. Some people look for... Oh, I'm in the wrong key. There we go, I'm sorry. Joel. Good, see? Hey, Joel. Here we go. It's in the key of A, not E. Some people look for Christmas under a tree. All those presents and things, they don't satisfy me like you do. The perfect Christmas is Christmas with you. It may be cold outside. That doesn't bother me. You by my side. It's Christmas with you. Sing a song. Come a little closer. Let me feel you near. Christmas is my favorite time. with you yeah. thank you very much we love you So, so Chuck, you, 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 you take this one, I'll take that one, I guess. All right. Okay? So, Test. Ah. That's so, fine. Uh, okay. There you go. So, so, tell us a little bit about the, the band you, you formed. It was uh, the Rustics back, back in the day. Oh, yeah. I don't know if everybody remembers that. There was a band called the Rustics many years ago. Of course, we were all 12 years old then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, now that I'm now that I'm 32 years old, I I get to sing with my son and stuff. And, yeah. uh, well, it, it, well, I, the, the story about uh, somebody coming up with some seed money for you when you were at at, uh, at a restaurant or something wasn't that? Was, right. There yeah. was uh, there were just basically four guys that we used to love to sing, and um, and we'd sing and sing, and some people would go bowling or golfing or whatever, and we'd love to sing three times a week or something. So one night, we, after we were done, we went to this bar, and there was nobody in there, and we're singing in the booth. And the guy comes in, he goes, you guys sound good. Now, at this time, we had no intention of, of getting a band or anything. So the guy comes in, he goes, you guys sound good. I just opened a bar in Ontario, and why don't you guys sing? And I said... Well, um, 
we don't have a band. He says, can you get one? I said, yeah, I knew a few guys. I put a band together. Says, I said, we don't have any equipment, though. <laughs> and he says, uh, how much is it? And this is like the early 60s, right? I didn't know anything about that stuff. I said, I don't know, $200. He goes, <laughs> boom, boom. He lays down 200 and walks out the door. He says, I'll see you the two weeks and Friday. Yeah. And uh, that, that was the beginning. Of it. I had, yeah. Well, well and, uh, then I had, I had a ten, two tenant speakers at my, my parents' house. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys know what that means. That was just nothing. And I went to, I think it was Rochester Radio Supply or something. I got a 50-watt amplifier and a couple of microphones that looked nice. What <laughs> I don't even know if the thing worked. We just plugged everything in and... Uh, well, one thing led to another, and that's how the whole band yeah. started. That there one guy. Go. Oh, yeah. There you go. God bless you. <laughs> Thank uh, you very much, Dom. Uh, I'm, uh, you've no, had you, thanks you, enough, a lot of thanks tonight, but no, uh, no, no, this no. guy's the real I just, thing. I, just, I appreciate I, it. I love you like family. You know that. Okay. Yeah. Some, someday you'll find us at Mama G's. I'll have the calamari, you know. So. We interrupt this Christmas special with breaking news from Middle Finger Lakes. This is Justine V reporting from the town hall of the town of Middle Finger Lakes, where a contentious board meeting has just concluded. The Middle Finger Lake Town Board has been accepting applications registering the use of an adjective to go along with citizens' pronouns. The $100 fee was going to be used to renovate the Washtub Museum, recently hit by lightning. In a surprise twist of unintended consequences, a number of wives got together to register adjectives for their husbands without their husband's consent. These include lazy, stupid, clueless, and short-winded. This led to a retaliation by the affected gentlemen with adjectives for their wives, the nature of which we cannot mention here. Reminiscent of the nuclear arms race in the 1960s, continuation on this course could have been catastrophic. However, the emergency board meeting tonight proposing a modification to the law was adopted that adjectives can only be registered to the person applying. The vote was 7-6, to six, with the females in a minority. This is Justine V reporting for the Lake Middle Finger Pointer. And now, back to your show. I'd like to give a shout out to Tracy Dreisbach, who is the executive director of the Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp and the wonderful things that they do. 101 years of providing services to adults and children with special needs. 160 acres in Rush with facilities that you wouldn't believe to serve these families. And 2,500 children and adults attend the camp each year. What a wonderful organization. Oh, yes, 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 James Gilbert. Oh, James Gilbert. And does anybody know? Yeah, of course you people know James Gilbert. In the morning on Channel 8. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for coming because... We're in Lima. Took you... It's not that far. It's like far. 25 minutes to get here. I know. It's I almost fell asleep on the it's road. It's not that far. Your Tesla won't make it, but what the heck, you know? <laughs> you know, I don't have a Tesla. You know, I have... It won't. You know, I have... You know, I, I, I got to be honest with you. One of my cars, I have a Hellcat. When I see a Prius, I'm just... Boom. You know, thank you for saving the gas that I need. I'm that's sorry. I'm sorry. I probably offended somebody here, but that's okay. So, so James is gonna. James, James is is wonderful. You see him on Channel Eight in the morning, and you kind of bond with him. He's, he has a lot of personality. And so, what he's gonna do? We have we have we have a prize here. You see this? We have. I'm standing in front of it. I think. We we have this basket. Okay, you see that basket? That basket's got. You know what's in there? Stuff. We got don't, a bottle in here. No, Nita and I don't. We don't know ourselves what's in the darn thing. We went to another charity event. Okay, and that was then. <laughs> And she goes, she goes, oh, oh, I won, I won. I go, what'd you win? And she goes, I don't know. I go, well, it looks nice. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. Okay, so we're re-gifting that. And where's, where's the body? So, yeah, who's, oh, oh, oh. And does she, she doesn't know. I, I, I grabbed this from our house. It's a, it's a peach bellini. It's, I don't know what bellini means. What is it, what bellini? It sounds like, it sounds like a small fairy thing. It's a French bellini. Okay, so. Um, what we're going to do is that he's going to. 
We're going we're to have to trust you guys on this one, okay? He's going to ask a question. It's going to be two questions. It's going to be either this or either that, okay? So put your right hand up for the first one. It's right? true or false. Well, basic, okay, you know, easy, I'll, let nice, you, I'll, easy. Let, I'll let you run True this and thing. false, okay, yeah. So yeah. we'll do true or false. So okay. the right hand is true, okay. left hand is false. That work for you? Oh, Pretty that, simple that, yeah, that way? All right. You're the expert. Go I got ahead. 20 questions. I don't know how much time we have. Probably not for 20 questions. I'd be surprised if we make it to all 20 questions, but okay, we're going to try. Ahead. We're going to get to somebody. So, yeah, okay. we'll make it happen. So, okay. basically, we'll do kind of uh, like five, if you five. do an elimination pool. Okay. Well, we'll see if you make it to five. If everybody gets the first one wrong and one person gets that yep, the next one go. right, that one person wins. So, that's what we'll do. So, we'll go along and go along and go along. Questions will get harder, 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 maybe easier than back to hard. And whoever lasts the longest wins the prize, right? That's, how does that sound? That work for you? I'm not going to really be able to police this that well, so let's, let's police ourselves necessarily. <laughs> and if everybody gets the first three questions wrong, then maybe we'll just, whatever, just keep going. All right, here we go. This is all, uh, by the way, this is all obviously weather related. I have some geography <laughs> questions in there. Just throwing that out there. It wasn't hard to divine that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some Finger Lakes yeah. questions in there too. This will be fun. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Number one, the Rochester Airport received 50.4 inches of snow last year. This was above average for snowfall. True or false? False. 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 True. Count five seconds. It is false. We get about 100 inches, so that was a terrible winter season. All right, number two, both Lake Erie and Lake Ontario can produce lake effect snow. True or false? That is true, yes. Sounds like we have most people still in the game. Here we go, pretty easy. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be out. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's all right. <laughs> Some people sharing the answers, that's all right. All right. Uh, I, this is obviously s s relatively snow related yeah, as well yeah. too. All right, number three. For lake effect snow, the water temperature, we're gonna get a little sciencey here. Okay. For lake effect snow, the water temperature needs to be warmer than the air temperature. True or false? True. Three, two, yes, that is true. Yeah. Very nice, good one there. I think we still got a lot of people left. Number four, this is a little bit more challenging here. The wind direction has nothing to do with where lake effect snow falls. That is false. The wind direction is extremely important in where lake effect snow goes. All right, number five. And after this one, I'm going to take a poll to see how many people we have left here. Number five. You expect them not to lie. That's, we're got, this I heard Lama's is the this most is honest <laughs> town yeah. in New York yeah, State. Yeah, 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 is that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, then I, I'm not trusting you. Uh, <laughs> Lake Ontario occasionally freezes over. True or false? false? That is true. It occasionally freezes over. Yes, did I get anybody with that? All right, so that's five questions. Now raise your hand if you're still in this. Have you gotten all of them right? If, if you're not raising your hand left or right, but you generally know the answer, I'll give it to you. I see like four or five people. All right, so we knocked a lot of people out there, the first five. Dom, we're, you, these you, are tough. You're trusting them? Yes. Oh, my God. I wish you bought a car from me years ago. Look, I mean, just, they trust I mean, me, really, and I'm a meteorologist, really. okay? <laughs> what? 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 Is that... Is, is that the real price of the car? No, you have to double that. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll give you my money. <laughs> they don't trust them. So, don't trust it, them. So, the guy that looks like Santa's a liar, okay? Don, look at him. He's look. not... He's not even Santa. He's look at him. Look at him. He's oh yeah, I got them all right. I, I trust him the most. No, I I think okay. All right, all right. Yeah, we got well, should we do that? Should we trust somebody to do this? We should just look at the number on the back of your your card there. You're good. Who do? Okay. Ah, yeah. Ooh, okay. How about do? How about do? It? Well, okay, we're just, we're going to do that. Pick a pick a number between one and thirty. Okay, I got it. You well, you that? need to tell somebody that. I mean, yes, oh. I, I, I pick a number. I could, I couldn't. I thought that. that was like a guess. You try to guess the number that I was thinking. Okay, like, on, those cards, on the, those, those cards that I gave you, I wrote a number in the back of the card. So pick a number. All right, seventeen. You didn't get a call. Okay, hold on a second. You didn't get, okay, 
Okay. So, okay. P pick a number. Do you, pick, again? Pick a, no. T no. <laughs> you need to tell me the damn number. 17, I 17. Pick. Okay. Who's got 17? Anybody got 17? Nobody has 17. Who's got 17? Wow. How about that? Nobody's got 17? Okay, who'll pay me 25 bucks for this? <laughs> who'll pay me 25 bucks for this thing we don't know what it is? Oh, come on. Somebody doesn't have 17, right? Nobody's got 17. Okay, pick another number. Okay, pick another number. All right, one. One. Who's got this? Somebody's got one. Who's got one? You got one? There you go. Okay. She's paying. Oh, okay. You have a beautiful <laughs> bottle of Casa Larga. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the money the money is going the money is going to the Rotary Sunshine Camp and the Ron McDonald House Charities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This segment brought to you by the Middle Finger Lakes Chamber of Commerce. When Isaac Isaac started Isaac Buick in 1940, he realized one thing, and his motto lives on today. Don't be putting on airs. A Buick is good enough. Mr. Isaac realized that most Finger Lakeians did not want to be seen as unsuccessful as driving a Plymouth, and driving a Cadillac just showed you had a problem with self-esteem. Stop in today for our Leave Your Dog at Home service promotion. 10% off any service for cat owners. Well, welcome, everybody. We have uh, somebody that everybody might know best as our master TV anchor here uh, in uh, in Rochester. And he is also a an author, and his name is Don Alhart. Uh, everybody knows Don. And he wrote this wonderful book, Sibley's Christmas Adventure. And I have a signed copy. This is rare. You know, these they're a little hard to get, but I have a signed copy here. And uh, you're going to be seeing uh, a rendition of this very soon on this YouTube. And uh, I'm just going to turn it off to Don, over to Don and have Don explain uh, the book and why he did it and uh, what you're going to see. Yeah, you know, I had always uh, had written many children's stories. A lot of them I wrote uh, to deliver in church. And they were called Little Parables for Little People. And uh, I wrote children's stories over the years and really wanted to write one that could be an actual book that children could hold in their hands and enjoy. And uh, to do that, I drew upon my own childhood memories of Sibley's department store downtown. Uh, when we would go to the fourth floor every Christmas season, walk through the magic corridor and look at all of the creations that they had done, pane by pane in display of, of Santa's workshop and the elves and the reindeer. Uh, and the toy land itself, where uh, Joe Bonet would play the kazoo every Christmas and and just bring out that spirit. So I, I said, how can I get this story to come to life? And I thought about a little mouse that maybe lived in Sibley's and would crawl under Santa's chair and listen to the children as they recited their list of uh, you know toys they wanted for Christmas every year. So I built the story around Sibley uh, and Sibley's adventure really entails not only those, those fun moments, but the day he learned that Sibley's department store was going to be closing and how devastating is one. And that's where the journey picks up and, and carries on in the book. Uh, I was very blessed to, uh, to have uh, Joe LaMonico put some music and sound effects to, to me reading the story, uh, to Brian Swarta at Channel 13 for taking that book and making the pages turn so that people can hopefully really enjoy and get the feel as if they're sitting right next to me when they hear the story of Sibley's Christmas Adventure. Well, Don, it's a, it's a wonderful book. It's a wonderful uh, lesson for children, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I tell you, I think everybody uh, who has one it, it enjoys it. It's going to be passed on from generation to generation. And God bless you for what you do. And uh, God bless you for what you do for the uh, Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp, too, Don. Yeah, and that's, that's why this is uh, such a great event, uh, you know, to be able to to benefit not only the Ark of Monroe, the Ark Foundation benefits from all the proceeds of the books and the and the Little Mouse, but we have had many events where people can you know not only support the Ark, but they're also supporting Rochester Rotary and the Sunshine Camp as well when they do it. So to bring things together, to experience that synergy really at the holiday time is is the most fun of all. Well, God bless you for what you do. And, and now let's take a, uh, a look at your rendition of the book.
ever since he could remember. Christmas was his favorite time of the year. After all, that's when he got to see Santa Claus himself. And listen, as all the boys and girls sat on his lap with their long list to tell him what they wanted for Christmas. And best of all, it was all happening in his home, the fourth floor of the big Sibley's department store. The little mouse lived in the wall right behind Santa's big chair. And just like the store... There's nothing wrong with the radio. We turn down the sound because we want to get to another entertaining part of the show. Now, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million. And there's a video of Don Alhart reading his book on nononsenseroundtable.com with all the pictures in the book. Share it with your kids. Right there. Nononsenseroundtable.com. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, did, did Joe leave? Is Joe still here? Why don't you introduce your song here? Because I tell you, I, I love your song. Well, as all of you know, I'm very humble and soft-spoken. And the last thing I want to do is talk about myself. The song is wonderful. I don't know really what to say, but thank you for having me here. It was starting in New York with the guy, Jamie Lawrence. We ended up going there and producing <laughs> we, we, it. We, we, Will we, Lee plays the bass we, on it, who's we, a famous... We, we, we got that. So what did you ask me to do? I don't even I know don't what I'm know. doing up here. I'm afraid of you, for God's sake. So, you know, I want you to introduce a song, and you'll just be done with it, okay? Here, I have this song here. It's really great. I Jamie didn't even Lawrence. want to come up here. Lord, I was God. talking to a girl that was saying t- <laughs> said that I was attractive. You know how hard that is? You know what? what, what you interrupted my whole thing. Just so need, just play no, it. Just, what do you want me to turn say? Turn his mic down. Turn on the... Go ahead. All right. Thank All you right. very much. Christmas time in New York City Caught up in the holiday glow Central Park is glistening in the snow Ooh, there's no place in the world like Manhattan City of spectacular views Shopping up and down the Gathered here together in Rockefeller Center You can feel the energy The season has ignited, we're all excited Lighting up the Christmas tree The skyline is majestic, the night is electric Lit up like a big billboard can't get any better than Christmas in New York. This town really knows how to party. Music and magic fill the air. Santa Claus is dancing in Times Square. You can feel the energy The season has ignited We're all excited Lighting up the Christmas tree The skyline is majestic The night is electric Lit up like a big billboard It can't get any better Than Christmas in
that is, that's, that is outstanding. That is absolutely outstanding. That, that is a killer. That really is. I just love that. I just love that. Well, there you go, boys and girls. That is our show for the evening. Thank you for coming in. I hope you had a good time. And if you want, you can get a picture with the real Santa. Thanks for listening. Tune in every week from 10 to 11 on News Radio Wham 1180. And check out our past shows at nonsenseroundtable.com. Happy holidays. <laughs>